Good afternoon, everybody. I'm delighted to welcome you to today's webinar on how to create a winning international strategy. The webinar will tell you how to use the Open to Export platform to create an export action plan and enter the Open to Export International Business Awards. My name is William Barnes Graham, and I'm a digital content manager at Open to Export. The Open to Export International Business Awards are an initi initiative launched with the support of the World Trade Organization, the International Chamber of Commerce, and the Institute of Export and International Trade. The International Business Awards are a great opportunity for SMEs in any country to win $5,000 towards their export plans using the Export Action Plan online tool on Open to Export. The free to use export action plan tool helps companies to take control of their export strategies, guiding them through all the key aspects of trade from selecting a market to shipment. Companies have until August 10th to enter and 10 shortlist shortlisted finalists will then pitch their businesses to the international media, international government officials and global business leaders at the WTO public forum in Geneva in October. More information can be found on opentexport.com international-business-awards. We will be running a live Q&A at the end of the session and you can ask questions at any point during this webinar using the question box on the control panel to the right hand side of your screen. We have three great speakers today. Starting off will be Arnie Milken, the young president of the Institute of Exports and International Trade, who will be setting the scene, describing the awards and outlining, outlining the opportunity for SMEs who enter and take part. We'll then have Le Leslie Batchelor, director general of the Institute and the brains behind the Open to Export Action Plan tool, who will be giving you tips on how to complete your plan and therefore to create a winning international strategy. And we'll then hear from Rachel Atwood, the Managing Director at The Great British Baby Company, a previous winner of one of our UK Export Action Plan competitions, who will share some of her experiences using the tool and pitching in the final. But to begin with, we'll have Arnie Milken. And hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us um, this great opportunity to speak to you about our Open to Export International uh, competition. This comes at a fantastic moment for the United Kingdom, but also for the world, where so many companies are looking to expand their business um, to grasp the opportunities that international trade offers. Exporting is one of the strategies how to improve your bottom line and how to make a mark for yourself and launch a really truly international brand. Yet, there are lots of challenges out there and we recognize that. And this is why especially SMEs, small and media enterprises, those future leaders, they need a helping hand. And this is what this, ex this, this competition, this exhibition of, of truly great um, exports and, and proposals for exporting really brings to the table. Um, here are some reasons why exporting is great. You boost your profits, you can spread the risk, you can create new jobs. It helps the economies. You can reach more customers. You you have an amazing experience uh, with, with different people from around the world. You experience new cultures and new challenges that you didn't even know you had to face up to. Overall, it is an experience that will transform yourself and your business. But of course, nothing is easy and, and exporting is only easy when you know how. So you need to know the market you're about to enter to and, and, and identify the market that you're going to. You, of course, need to get paid and that is not a given in today's world. How will you deliver your product and services? What are the logistics surrounding it? How will you reach customers? And then, of course, there are regulations and compliance to deal with. So just looking at these points, you can already see that the rewards are great, but the challenges are also there. But this is where we come in. This is where this competition comes in. And this is where our uh, support comes in through this competition. We will help you to become this exporter, the exporter that understands the market, that knows how to get paid, that thinks about logistics, that will understand how and, and to speak to customers, potential customers, how to reach them, and also understands and appreciates the need for regulations and compliance. 
So this is how we come to the WTO ICC Small Business Champions Initiative. This is the initiative that when, when we saw it last year pop up on the website of the World Trade Organization, when the Director General of the, uh, of the ICC and the WTO, when they both announced it, we said, yes, this is exactly the kind of competition we have been waiting for because we have experience helping UK business export to the wider world. It is something that we can take to the wider audience. It is a proven concept that helps many more businesses around the world to export. We want to make a contribution to world trade that goes beyond our own national borders. We want to take our experience, our knowledge and our network to the next level. So we went to the WTO, we went to the ICC and we said, hey, this is what we're proposing. Can we help small and medium enterprises around the world to export? And luckily and thankfully, they said yes. So we made our pitch. We made our pitch to particip uh, participate. Here you see a photo of me and of Leslie um, at the last uh, public forum um, where we hosted a session, a su very successful session, session on the importance of um of education and international trade and training and this is one of the flagships that we offer at the institute we are an institute um the institute of export and international trade and we've been training for over six eight years we are a professional membership body and we represent the interests of everyone uh, involved in importing and exporting and international trade in the uk but as we leave the european union and as our yeah, one of our new catchphrases is global Britain, uh, representing um, global trading values around the world. As we are a trading nation, it is only right and it is only time that we give back, that we re-engage in trade uh, with the wider world. And this is what uh, global Britain concretely looks like. This is our small contribution to the global trading world to say, yes, we're here and we're ready to, to engage. We have a lot of knowledge on exporting and trading. We have extensive networks with practitioners, with academics, with networkers, with professional uh, interest representation. Um, we are an 80-year-old professional membership body. We bring people together, we train them, we educate them. This is what this competition does. Not only will you show us your plans to export, we will guide you to export in the correct way. And you will be able to uh, receive um, much more than just support with your export project. You're entering a family, you're entering a world of of, of international trade professionals. And this is what this institute is all about. It is about exchanging ideas, networking and trading um, professionally together. We are not limited to the UK. We start in the UK. Um, this is where we were born, if you wish, but our limit is now the world. This is what global Britain means to us. And this is why we invite the world, small and medium enterprises um, of the world to join us on this exciting journey. And one of the outreach projects that we're engaging in is this competition to which we welcome you. So it's great. And then maybe just a final word on what you can gain from this. This is an international award. This is a competition um, where you show us your ambitions for trading with the world, for reaching out to new markets. And we want to recognize this. Now, we know that you know, a certain amount of money is not going to resolve all the problems that exporting can bring about. We're not just chucking money at this. No, we are saying something else. We want to recognize your effort and your trust from going out of your comfort zone and delivering products to the world, worrying about things that if you'd stayed in your home market, you wouldn't need to worry about. You should be getting a financial reward to support your export plans. This money is for you to realize the plan that you have created on paper, on, on the computer, in your head, and make it happen. It is a kickstart for you to become the professional trader internationally that you already are domestically. So this is an incentive, financial incentive. But it is, as I said, much more than this. You enter a community of like-minded people. The support is there. The demand is there. You will be joining us and we will have a go at it together. So in addition to the $5,000 that you can win, there is much more at stake for you a possibility to travel to Geneva, to come to the WTO, the World Trade Organization, at one of its flagship events for stakeholders for in the international trading community, for the trading academics, the um, public forum 2018, early October, where you will be presenting your strategy, where you will be presenting 
your business to the 500, 600, 700 thousand participants from around the world that come to these events. It is a first glimpse of what being an international trader is all about. In the presence of those who started this competition, who wanted this competition, and who support this competition. The highest premium, the highest support body, the World Trade Organization, the International Chamber of Commerce, and the Institute of Export and International Trade. And of course, it doesn't stop there. We um, we give you more support. There are lots of different tools, lots of different um, options that, that we can discuss that, that you will have access to from free memberships to the IOE to consulting services that we provide for you um, to joining um, trainings, online trainings, um, and so on. And so on. A final word on the open to export um, link between the institute and and um, and you. Open to export is part of IOE um, IT of our institute. One of the branches, one of the projects, one of the outreach um, opportunities is open to export. It is the digital solution to boosting the UK's SMEs exports. It helps new and inexperienced or inexperienced businesses to prepare to sell overseas by giving them vital access to online information, support, and advice. And here's the good thing. It comes at no cost whatsoever. It includes introductory guides to all the key steps of exporting, market guides, and a comprehensive webinar program. And you can see the link um, provided below. And I encourage you to take a good look at this website and the tools that are offered on there and to join us in this competition. Leslie will now provide you details as to, um, as to how you're going to enter this competition. Just a final word. Um, on this open for export platform. It's, this is the, the start of your journey. And I, as the young president of the IOEIT, uh, encourage your participation greatly. It is an opportunity for your business to win. It is an opportunity for you to expand beyond your national borders and get it right from the get-go. It comes at no cost to you. And in turn, you will receive free education, the opportunity to win $5,000 and um, a lifetime worth of support, uh, network, access to the Institute of Export and International Trade and the global trade community. We won't leave you alone. Uh, once you're in it, you're in it to win it, as I say. So no matter where you are in the globe, thanks to the cooperation of the IOE, IT, the WTO, the ICC, you can now make use of this online open for export online action, uh, export action plan tool. And this is the first step of making your journey to export a success. The tool we're about to explain to you will allow you to take ownership of your export strategy. And that, as I said, in a structured systematic way. And that way you will make the decisions uh, from the, the first ideas of what you want to sell abroad to successfully trading abroad, selecting a market and delivering these products to new customers. So you're ready to go? I think so. $5,000 and further prizes plus an opportunity to pitch at the WTO public forum. That is going to make the difference. And hey, you know, the reward is there. The demand is there. We are there. So the only question you have to answer is, will you be there? So don't delay and start your plan today. And with this, thank you very much for listening to me. And I'll pass you on to uh, Leslie for next steps. Yeah, thank you, Arnie. And uh, now I'm going to hand over to Leslie Batchelor, who's going to talk about how companies can use the Export Action Plan tool um, and how to enter the competition. Thank you. Uh, thank you both. Uh, Arnie was brilliant, as always, explaining to us so, so vividly how uh, we can get involved and how important international trade is to the world and to making it a, uh, actually all of us trading in peace, which is a wonderful thought. So, without further ado, I'm just going to give you some information about the awards, which uh, are on the um, website that you just mentioned, International Business Awards, and then uh, there's also a link there about starting your actual action plan, which is opentoexport.com action plan. So, if we, without further ado, we'll go on to the next slide. And uh, this is just really explaining to you uh, what you'll see when you click into Open to Export. You'll see this wonderful headline about the International Business Awards, but you'll also see underneath that um, uh, a journey that we've planned, which is five stages that we encourage you to work through, which is all about getting started, selecting the right market, uh, reaching customers, pricing and getting paid, and then finally delivery and documentation. 
Having said that, uh, within each one of those, obviously not so much on the delivery and documentation, there's a lot about services and how you can actually sell your skills internationally, because these are all uh, something that we can offer very easily, and we should never forget that a skill is, is easy to sell internationally, but again, you just have to know how to approach that. Um, so each one of these topics that we have there is our journey, have articles and webinars and blogs, and uh, there's a great helpline to help you understand any questions that you can't get the answers to from the website. There are over a couple of thousand articles on the website, so that means that there's a lot for you to go with. And most importantly, there's the action plan. And you can see there top, along the top line, if you just click on that, it will uh, offer you the opportunity to find more about the competition uh, and then obviously moving down onto the actual action plan itself that you can sign into. So we're we'll going to have a look at how this is completed. And there are five areas, as I said earlier. So the getting started um, is going to really start helping you to understand, you know, how to evaluate your business readiness. The selecting a market is going to be uh, there to help you understand how you prioritize which market you send your offering to. And that, as I say, could be a service, it could be a skill, it could be you going off to show people how to do things or teach or train, and it could be a physical product. But making sure you get the right market to work with is hugely important. The next stage is all about how you're going to reach your customers and, um, Okay, uh, the next stage is how you're going to reach your customers. We're then also going to look at uh, deciding your price and also uh, getting your goods delivered compliantly and increasingly with the uh, new regulations coming out from the EU and UK. It's going to be more important that we understand exactly how to do that compliantly. Uh, next slide, please. So using the action planning tool, we're going to complete the tasks and exercises along the five export steps. Uh, and you'll see on the right hand side of the screen, there's a, a, a screenshot of how the action plan tool looks. And you'll notice that there's a chap there with a, a little video and he'll talk you through exactly what you're going to do and how you're going to do that. And each part of this plan of the five stages has a section and within that section, it tells you what you're going to learn and how you're going to do that and on the right hand side it tells you which useful resources that you can use uh, and in this case we're looking at how to prioritize our offerings and selling them abroad uh, we find that a lot of companies think that they ought to sell everything abroad and we want to try and get them to sell the cash cows the things that they know they can support internationally uh, and that's why we get to look at the boston consulting group and you'll notice there's a, a click there for the next task. So it takes you on a journey all the way through there. Uh, next slide, please. So when you get to the summary, after you've finished a section, you'll, you'll notice that there's um, a, a set of actions and you can actually uh, fill in those actions. You can fill in quite a lot of uh, content uh, data within that action. In this case, we put contact distributors, but that could be research and contact distributors, set up at meetings, that type of thing. And then you have a, a calendar beside that. And at that point, you can decide whether or not uh, you can put a deadline on there. So that helps you to actually make your plan uh, become alive and become a, a working document rather than just a plan that you might do at some stage. Next slide, please. OK. So one of the things we've got here is we've got uh, getting started and we've got a, a gap analysis here. And um, this one is really going to help you to understand some of the strengths and weaknesses in terms of international trade. So what we're trying to do is help you to understand how to trade internationally and what you already have within your own business that would be useful or perhaps might be a risk. So the weaknesses are obviously things that you need to try and uh, do something about. And very often it's a lack of skill or a la lack of knowledge about how to do the paperwork, in which case, obviously, uh, that's something that can be easily rectified with your new relationship with Open to Export and the Institute of Export and International Trade. Um, we make suggestions as to what you might find useful. And all the way through this, you have the gentleman in the video who's going to help you uh, to work your way through that program as well. Uh, next slide, please. 
uh, within the selecting the market uh, place, what we've also realized is that once you start looking at this, uh, you have a circumstance where you you know where other people are active in it within your industry, you know what's going on a little bit more about what your competitors are doing. And these sometimes give you ideas as to where you might go. So we encourage you to look at three different countries. And when you're looking at these three different countries or markets, you're actually beginning to start formalizing a plan and you need to select which one's going to be best for you. And in this case, we have a whole list uh, of ideas. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get you to think about what you're good at within your company so that you can then uh, decide whether you still have that skills if you were, say, to go to Japan, South Korea or Uzbekistan. And when we're looking at this, we're looking at language abilities, we're looking at the ability to collect money and to get payments. We're looking at the legal aspects, we're looking at the freight, we're looking at intellectual property and insurance. It's the whole the whole uh, uh, rigmarole of going through uh, and making sure you have everything in place before you start exporting because once you've done that and you get that right from the, as Arnie says the get-go you're going to be able to uh, ship profitably on your first consignment and start making money and producing a sustainable market. Next slide please. Again, we're looking at, uh, this time we're on the stage of the journey, we're looking at reaching customers. And at this point, we need to think about, you know, what do we do in the domestic market to sell to those customers and how we consider a new international market might differ from that and what preparations we'd have to make to make sure that we're doing that. So, you know, if we say sell through, um, our, through our website in the UK, then I suppose it's quite straightforward that we'd look at selling through our website internationally and setting up an international page or more importantly, perhaps having URLs that actually reflect the market in which you're trying to attract attention. We do know in that case that businesses are four times more likely to buy from someone who's selling in their own local language than they are in English. So it's worth thinking about translating things. So once you've considered how you do things here in the UK, then you can start translating that literally into how you do that internationally. And that could easily be, you know, I use a, a, an agent here in the UK or a distributor and finding those agents and distributors, uh, there's a set of processes that help you to choose the right ones and to understand how to work with them once you've started in that process. Most importantly, reaching customers in each market could be different and, and having a variety of different routes to market works just as easily as just having one. In fact, it's much more uh, effective if you can actually tailor your messaging to exactly what that market wants. Uh, that's that whole think global but act local. Uh, new slide please. So in the getting paid one we do have some interesting things talking about pricing strategy but most importantly we have a foreign exchange rate and working capital ready reckoner and within this we, we encourage you to think about how long you've quoted for, how you build your quote and how you make sure that you don't over promise both in terms of how you're going to um, manufacture, because obviously sometimes you have a lot of different uh, a, a lot of different elements in terms of raw materials and shipping and packing and, and certification, uh, but also in terms of foreign exchange and making sure that if you're quoting in another currency, you understand what the risks are and what the implications are. This is an important area that is going to grow and grow because actually we need to understand how currency impacts on our uh, invoicing and financing. And I, I don't know who Craig is, so we'll move on from that. Um, why don't we move on to the next slide? So the next slide's all about documentation and delivery. Um, even if you are selling a service or skill, sometimes you do need documents. Uh, you certainly need to make sure that you're complying with standards and uh, um, these standards can vary slightly in the markets you're working within. It might be the question of technical certificates to support the fact that you know that you've got the right um, qualifications to work in that market the insurance uh, liabilities, the intellectual property, and things like VAT. Uh, so um, I think that moves us on to the next slide, which then talks about how we're going to generate our report. So 
the the actions we've just talked our way through they can take within like something from two hours to two days to two weeks depending on how often you want to go online and how much time you've got spare the whole point is it's all about putting you in charge of your plan and making sure you do it when you're in the mood to do it and you're actually happy to get on and find the information you need um we have a lot of late night a lot of late night action planners on our on our uh, website we know that so once you've completed all those sections you can generate your action action plan um, and I think there's a slide that if we press that again you actually complete your action plan and um, if you click on that next it shows you where to do that uh, and at that point you can enter the action plan to the competition or you can literally just generate your report but do try thinking about going into the competition the awards simply because it's the first time we've done anything internationally to have the support of the World Trade Organization, to have the International Chamber of Commerce and the Institute of Export and International Trade all rooting for you, all helping you produce your plan. It's going to be a tremendous competition and a tremendous uh, um, a showcase for anybody's business wherever you are in the world. So I do encourage you to enjoy it and get involved with that. Can we have the next slide, please? So here's the report that uh, it would uh, generate. It obviously has your logo on it and your company name. Uh, it then actually helps you to work through all the different elements that you've got. It, it helps to create for you a, uh, a chronologically ordered action plan that lifts all those actions and all those tasks and dates from the plan as you've gone through there it becomes a truly useful document. You can actually work through the actions yourself or take it to a, an advisor, perhaps a bank or perhaps your uh, local uh, government that actually advises. Uh, next slide, please. So here's a fabulous winner. Uh, we, we are now, uh, this was one that we did at the Swiss Embassy. Uh, actually, this was a past winner who has a brewing company and uh, our current winner who is the uh, Great British Baby Company. And we're very, very pleased to be able to say that Rachel Atwood, Managing Director of the Great British Baby Company, is here to talk through some tips as to how she did the plan and how she used it. Thank you very much, Rachel. Thanks, Leslie. Uh, well, yes, as Leslie just said, um, I was fortunate enough to win the UK version of the Export Action Plan competition back in November, which was uh, a great surprise and a great privilege um, for my brand. So today I'm going to be uh, talking a little bit about uh, the Great British Baby Company, as well as my experience with completing the Export Action Plan and uh, the aftermath of the competition, how we use the prizes and how really uh, completing the Export Action Plan has really set in foot our global agenda as a brand. Next slide, please. Okay, so the Great British Baby Company uh, stands alone in lots of ways in the luxury children's wear market in as much as it is a brand that um, is entirely British made and also makes all of its pieces using uh, British cloth from historical British textile mills. So uh, the brand specializes in tailored outerwear and um, as a brand, we insist on using ethical production and natural and sustainable materials, which is um, something that we use these historical British mills for because they produce pure lamb's wool cloth, pure cashmere, so on and so forth. Um, the whole idea of British heritage or revitalizing British heritage for the next generation is something that's very important uh, to the brand and I'd like to think gives the brand some substance. Also, uh, I like to see the Great British Baby Company is as in some ways um, a family legacy in as much as I come from on one side of my family, several generations of London Taylor and on the other side of my family, several generations of woolen mill owner in Wales. So it's a nice way of kind of weaving together, if you like, uh, that kind of uh, family heritage. Um, the Great British Baby Company is, I like to say, a brand with values rather than just a brand that relies on empty brand value. It stands for something. And I'd like to think that our pieces hold a significance that uh, go beyond just uh, cloth and thread. Next slide, please. 
Okay, so in terms of where our exports were a year ago, um, well, I always had an idea that the Great British Baby Company was um, a brand that would be uh, export heavy, if you like, but I didn't really have a clear idea of uh, the brand's export strategy. So within about six months of the uh, company setting up in our first autumn winter selling season, um, we had uh, several individual customers through our website in the USA, Australia and across continental Europe, the colder countries, so the lowlands and Scandinavia. Uh, we started to develop uh, attraction via social media, that's probably how we got lots of our individual customers, but again there was no detailed export strategy, there was just some kind of very general uh, belief that uh, the company had legs to export, but nothing particularly clear in terms of the strategy. Next slide, please. Okay, so the, the great advantage of us uh, completing the export action plan was uh, the opportunity to put all these very oblique ideas of exporting down on paper and to think logically and methodically about how what was a brand that was selling to one or two uh, customers uh, through our website would transform to being a brand with a proper international presence. So it made me really think about uh, the brand's uh, export appeal and also really what its unique selling point was on an international basis. Um, I also got thinking about the uh, key target markets for the brand and um, the key target markets that I uh, specified and again uh, that are our key target markets today are uh, China, South Korea and Japan. Um, the Export Action Plan also encouraged me to think about uh, viable routes to market, which obviously is incredibly important when you're exporting, but also viable routes to market within a realistic budget, bearing in mind that uh, a year ago, and to an extent still today, we are a young company and we don't have a blank check. So we have to think very pragmatically about our export strategy, what we can afford, bearing in mind our other production obligations. And generally, and this was something that was really, really useful with the export action plan, is thinking about the mechanics of export. And as Leslie just explained, uh, thinking about things in terms of how we're going to get paid, of logistics, all this kind of thing that may be not automatic. Uh, to the average uh, brand owner and certainly wasn't in my case. Next slide, please. Okay, so again, uh, completing the export action plan was excellent in terms of drawing together all these uh, disparate ideas and hopes and objectives regarding the brand's export potential. It was an excellent exercise in not only um, kind of honing and crystallizing thoughts that I'd had previously about the brand's export strategy, but what we ended up with on completing the export action plan was a real roadmap to use, and we still refer to it today, uh, a year on, of how we're going to go about uh, exporting. Um, the general process was really enlightening um, in terms of the things that we were encouraged to think about, the practical hurdles, and uh, again, it is something that we, we still refer back to. Uh, today and will do, I'm sure, for many seasons to come. Next slide, please. Okay, so the uh, experience of entering the competition, so the actual showcase was really an excellent experience. Uh, it was great to uh, network with fellow uh, brand owners. Uh, it can often be quite a lonely experience uh, managing a brand. I, I talked to uh, the people who uh, work with me and that's about it. So hearing the insight from other brands that had aspirations to export or who were quite prolific in terms of export was really valuable and uh, it was a great opportunity to bounce ideas off one another and to in some cases uh, gain valuable contacts. There are a number of uh, brands who were in a similar sector to the Great British Baby Company so that was really good. Um, I found the experience of the showcase really supportive. It didn't feel competitive or unpleasant. It was uh, really a, a nice, quite warm, uh, <laughs> validating experience. Um, also, it was very helpful in terms of the insight that we were given by the expert uh, panel of judges, uh, including Leslie, of course. 
and um, also we had an opportunity to um, benefit from the questions of the export panel so that really did again hone our thinking about our different export strategy next slide please Okay, so the win was really uh, important for the brand, uh, not only in terms of uh, more people recognizing the brand, uh, PR opportunities and more networking opportunities, but in terms of the prize package that we received, um, uh, obviously the prize money uh, was very useful for us in terms of, actually we used it to help build our presence on uh, Chinese social media and also embark on preliminary research for potential partners, agents and or distributors in our target markets. Um, but the other prizes were equally as useful and very tailored to uh, a fairly young company starting off its export journey. So. Um, I received some support from uh, Thrive Digital, which is an e-commerce uh, strategy expert. And um, I received some excellent advice there in terms of e-commerce in China. Also, I benefited from a British Library research uh, voucher. So I was able to get really specific research into distributors and agents and also um, retailers and target markets. Also, of course, the Institute of Export uh, membership, which uh, entitles you to all kinds of really excellent uh, resources. So I actually uh, use the Institute of Export um, website quite regularly uh, to uh, benefit from its learning resources. Um, there's a rich program of seminars um, every quarter as well. And also there's a really excellent uh, export helpline that I've used on a number of different occasions uh, to ask practical questions about uh, exporting. Next slide, please. Okay, so in terms of where our exports are now, not a lot of time has lapsed, obviously, since last November, but um, the export presence of the brand has grown considerably. Uh, one thing that I really like about uh, being in the uh, luxury children's wear market is that still lots of our growth can at times be quite counterintuitive. So um, back in November, I wouldn't have predicted that uh, the brand would gain um, uh, presence in the United States, but in fact, it is gaining a significant, small at the moment, but still significant foothold in the United States. Uh, with uh, We're on the brink of partnering with uh, a major uh, luxury children's wear e-tailer, so that's a significant uh, development, but uh, still our focus is on Asia Pacific, specifically South Korea, Japan and China. I always realised that these territories would be difficult to crack. It will be a slow burn, if you like, in terms of accessing these markets. But at the moment, I'm in talks with distributors in both Japan and South Korea, and I intend that that's going to be an ongoing process. It's a matchmaking process, if you like, but it's something that we're engaged with at the moment. As well as that, uh, we're exporting to a combination of uh, independent boutiques and individual customers in uh, France, Belgium and Italy, to name but a few European states, as well as the uh, Gulf states, in particular Qatar and the UAE. Next slide, please. OK, so in terms of tips for future export action plan entrants, uh, firstly, persevere with completing the plan. It is entirely worth it. Um, I was one of these uh, kind of uh, late night action plan um, <laughs> completers that uh, Leslie was talking about because um, I was engaged uh, with uh, running the brand during the day. But it was such a rewarding exercise. Um, I would recommend that entrants really focus um, their presentations and also their plans on export strategy. That might sound like an obvious point, but I think it's quite easy to digress and to uh, just discuss the brand and to kind of articulate your passion about your brand rather than engaging with the task at hand, which is discussing export strategy and thinking about the strategy that can be uh, executed and that is viable. In terms of the presentation at the uh, showcase practice, now I was guilty of overrunning on the presentation. In my defence, um, I'm an academic uh, by trade. I work as a lecturer, so I'm used to talking for an hour and not 10 minutes. So concision is really important. 
Um, obviously thinking about the kind of questions that the panel may ask you, you have to be able to defend your action plan. Uh, but I suppose my main tip is just make the most of the process, both in terms of completing the plan and uh, gaining insight from other entrants in the competition and also the advice of the experts uh, on the panel itself. Next slide, please. And that is it. <laughs> okay, thank you. No, thank you, Rachel. That was um, fantastic. Great, as always, to hear from one of our winners. And um, yeah, some really great tips and some really great insights into what was a great competition we ran in November um, with, with yourselves winning. And we've um, we've done eight competitions now in the UK, and this is obviously our first international one. So it's it's great to hear from one of our previous domestic winners. And um, hopefully, one of the future international winners will find some wisdom in that. So thank you, Leziani and Rachel, and we hope you've got plenty of tips there on how to enter the competition. But we are now going to open the floor for a couple of questions. So please do ask questions using the control panel on the right-hand side of the screen. Arnie's had to dash off, but Leslie and Rachel will, will be here to um, answer some questions till the end. Um, so the first question I'm going to ask is, um, is for you, Leslie. It's, it's from a international business who are asking, does my entry need to be in perfect English um, to be considered for the competition? So no, it's yeah, no, it certainly does not. I mean, it's not a test on your English. It's it's just a guide to help you develop a plan. Obviously, the the clearer the plan, the better. But we are very competent at, at working out what you mean, and we work with lots of countries all over the world. So we'd be very happy. Uh, it's not your English test. It's definitely just to try and help you understand how business should work. Thank you. And um, we've had a few questions generally about um, ex sporting some of the processes and challenges within it which you are more than free to to ask um, and one such question which I'll put to Leslie first and then invite Rachel to comment on from her own experiences but it's how do you find overseas buyers and distributors um, Leslie? Well, I, I, that's a very good question. I suppose it's key to how we all start as well. It, it depends where you are in the world as to how you do that and which market you're targeting. I always find that one of the best routes to finding distributors, you know, obviously the internet is very useful for doing searches, but if you get hold of a an exhibition that perhaps might be uh, linked to your industry in some shape or form, there's normally a few uh, big shows that are, are out there and you might be a periphery or you might be a component part of that show. So for instance, there's big food and drink shows across the world. There's new design shows. There's uh, CBIT in Germany it's for, if you've got computer products. There's music. There's there's some sort of exhibition somewhere. And what you need to do is get on those websites, try and get hold of past catalogues of those shows to see who exhibits there and who's been taking part to start to build a picture as to what's going on. It's an excellent way of finding uh, new distributors or people that might be able to put you in touch with distributors. So, you know, there are lots of clever ways around this. Uh, sometimes if you're very fortunate, your government might be able to help you and to realize that, the, um, that they have support for you within their embassy network. But if you're not that fortunate, there are lots of different ways of doing it. Chambers of Commerce are very good and so are trade associations too. Uh, basically, there's lots of help. And if, if push comes to the shove, come and talk to us about it as well. And Rachel, from your experiences, kind of uh, what tips would you give for finding overseas buyers or distributors? Uh, I agree with what Leslie just said, actually. And uh, I would add that what we have done in the past is really look at what our competitors are doing. Um, what relationships they have in terms of their export presence, which agents they use, which distributors they use as well. But uh, trade shows are really invaluable in terms of finding um, potential partners for export. Yeah. Thank you. And it's, um, it's a really good question, really important question. And one of those which we have uh, lots of articles on the website about and we've done webinars on it before and it's something you can use to helpline for so that's exactly what open to export is about um, another question about fee competition so leslie um the question is if the company makes it to the final but then can't travel to geneva for it what can they do 
Well, um, we're setting up a system actually in Geneva for them to be able to do it online and to do a video link with us or a webinar or something uh, in, in some shape or form. I suppose if necessary, they if they wanted to, they could send us a recording as to what they wanted to say. I'm sure there'll be a way around it because the one thing we know is that the WTO is very excited about the prospect of dealing with countries all over the world engaged in this type of planning process. Fantastic. And um, a question we've had from a, a couple of people has been around um, whether you have to be an entirely new exporter or whether if you're ex already exporting to a couple of markets but are using the plan to research a new market, is, is that are you still eligible for the competition? Yes, in our view, you are still eligible. It, you know, it really is about new markets, new exporters, it's new experiences, it's trying to grow people into great exporters. Fantastic. And um, I mean, to answer another a question about the criteria for the competition, uh, one is just in kind of asking about uh, whether a particular sector from a particular country can use the, the platform to build a plan and export to other countries yep it's it's completely um it doesn't matter what sector you're in or um where you are this is all about exporting and the processes which are universal to all sectors when it comes to trade so um wh wherever you are whatever you're doing it's um it's definitely relevant um another question we've had in is to do with currency and it's again i'll, I'll go leslie then rachel um and it's kind of how do companies plan ahead for things like currency when uh, constructing an export plan or um, trying to trying to boost their sales? And so, Leslie. Well, I think the first thing to say is that if you go on to the action plan, uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me, if you go on to the action plan, you will see that there's a ready reckoner there to help you try and understand currency. There are quite a few. Uh, um, uh, articles about currency but most importantly it's about planning with currency and starting at the very beginning when you're quoting in different uh, currency making sure that you actually understand what the risk is and what the end result will be so you need to include a foreign exchange bureau or your bank as early as possible and make sure when you're quoting that you're leaving yourself with enough time to be able to collect the money to be able to sell it back to whoever it is you've agreed the contract with it's all about timing and planning i'm afraid and uh, rachel in in your experience how have you um played the, the kind of currency fluctuations card um, as Leslie said, it's all about uh, planning and uh, luckily in uh, the fashion industry, or at least the, the children's fashion market that uh, I've experienced at least, is a convention of um, pro forma payments and uh, paying in advance for initial orders. So that mitigates some of the, the risk of uh, currency, currency sorry, fluctuation over time. Um, so that's fortunate, but it's all about uh, keeping your eye on the ball, making sure that you've uh, that you're aware of fluctuations that you can, uh, well, nobody can exactly preempt <laughs> fluctuations, but just be prepared and research. I think it might also be worth pointing out we have a, a a daily bulletin that goes out to all our members talking about currencies and the um, plans and what what they see as potentially the movements that might be happening and they're often linked in with uh, ecolog economic uh, factors, budgets, um, things like politicians, different elections, uh, announcements that some people make about tariffs and things like that, that it suddenly impacts on the currency you're dealing in. Fantastic. And um, we've had a, an interesting question in terms of, um, it's a really important question for, for exporters to really grapple with, and it's in terms of the when importers are having to kind of comply with uh, different tariffs and duties and regulations um, and kind of rules of origin and all that sort of thing, how do exporters kind of prepare for the potential impact on pricing? Um, so some of the unseen costs of exporting, perhaps. Uh, Leslie, is that, is, is that something you'd like to talk to? Yeah, I mean, basically importing and exporting, if you know how to export, you can see exactly how it is that your uh, your customer is going to be impacted 
by tariffs and by any sort of standards. So if you're bringing goods into this country, then you automatically have to pay perhaps excise duty or perhaps um, duty of some sort that actually covers the, uh, the type of product you're bringing in. And that's normally from outside of the EU. And of course, if you're bringing in from the EU, there, there isn't any at, uh, at the moment. Uh, actually, what you're doing is you're just actually really trying to prepare again, sorry, keep on about this, but we can help you find out what goods, what tariffs your goods uh, attract. And also if there are any uh, non-tariff barriers, and these are things like registrations or standards that you'd have to adhere to, or certain processes you have to get. And, you know, obviously we're all going to have to become much, much more familiar with certificates of origin, uh, both exporting and as they come into the country, because we're going to have to keep records of uh, where our goods come from and how we can justify a, a UK origin uh, statement on our invoices. So it's all going to get a little bit more complicated, but no worries, we can all learn how to do this. It's quite easy. Oh, sorry. Um, all, <laughs> sorry. It is exactly the same across the whole world. You just really and truthfully, you have to make sure that you understand what is going to be impacted across the world. Sorry, I, I, I launched into talking about the UK by accident because I'm, we're all so worried about how much paperwork we're going to fill in. Paperwork is there. You know, if you're dealing under terms of a letter of credit, if you're dealing in different ways to collect the money, you know, if you even if you've got something in advance, you still have to work out how you're going to collect the money and where that's going to go, uh, and how you police it if people don't pay you. So there's quite a lot of considerations to be in, to, taken into account there. Indeed, and these are all things which um, the action plan tool does help you to to make sure you factored in kind of things like uh, rules of origin and the different documentation and paperwork you need to complete. It's all um, included as tasks and prompts which um, you're suggested to, to set as actions or to at least factor in. Um, and then a couple more questions about the competition. Um, so Leslie, I mean, in terms of, obviously we've heard um, from Rachel about kind of one of our previous winners in the Great British Baby Company. What other sorts of companies have entered and, and won the competition previously? Well, do you know, we've had the most fabulous array of entries. We've had people with software products. We've had uh, a Down syndrome uh, iPad software that helps people to help their children to understand more about what's going on around there. We've had uh, an earpiece that will translate. We've had the one of the winners in Liverpool um, was a company that taught you how to shape your mouth so that when you were learning a new language, you could actually pronounce the words more effectively. We've had t-shirt manufacturers, we've had dressmakers, we've had shoe manufacturers and brilliant handbag manufacturers. <clears throat> we had someone who had um, um, a, a fertilizer that they'd invented. We've had something that is a, a pump up seat that for traveling with your children so that their uh, seat belt doesn't cut into them. We've had all sorts of manner of things and we're always, always open to new ideas. I think we had a construction company that had a new crane that they wanted to market. Genuinely, there is no limit on what it is, food and drink, construction, you know, you name it, and a lot of software and a lot of different ideas from the service industry. Fantastic. And um, we've got, had a question in from South Africa, and it's um, it's kind of how, how would you recommend companies um, to identify some of the export opportunities for their product? So kind of how do they do their research into seeing uh, I, I suppose, product or sector opportunities um, and where they are? Uh, I mean, that really is a very difficult thing. The only thing I can do is repeat what I was saying about, you know, finding out if there's a trade show, having a look to see what's going on in your market. The only best thing I can say is read about your industry, make sure you're in touch with what's going on, join a trade association or become involved in some shape or form, talk to chambers of commerce locally. I think there's a huge amount going on that you will, you know, will find will help you. 
Fantastic. And, and Rachel, in terms of um, some of the sources of information you've used for uh, researching opportunities and um, kind of um, the, where the demand is for your products, kind of what, what's helped you in, in your experience? Um, well, I suppose just research, keeping um, a finger on the pulse in terms of where the, the uh, children's wear market is going, attending trade fairs regularly, but also, I mean, the internet is a fabulous tool <laughs> and uh, using uh, search functionality on um, LinkedIn, uh, just basic Google searches to find out um, kind of who's buying what, uh, the countries that may be uh, more receptive than others to our products. Um, I suppose there's an advantage in the fact that we specialize in coats. So some of the warmer countries in the world may not be interested in what we have to offer saying that we're selling coats to Qatar <laughs> which is one of the warmest uh, countries uh, heavily air conditioned <laughs> indeed yes um, but there's also an element that I particularly like about uh, our export strategy and that is that it can be quite counterintuitive that uh, using the example again of exporting to Qatar we never would have predicted that would happen but I mean when we get uh, some kind of inkling uh, a feel is put out for interest in a particular territory then that is the cue to start researching um, other stockists other potential partners so um, it's kind of a cumulative process I found in that respect. Brilliant. Well, um, I think on that note, we're, we're almost up to the hour. So I think we're going to to wrap up there. Um, if you've got further questions, feel free to get in touch with us at admin at opentextboard.com. But um, thank you once again to Leslie, Arnie and Rachel. I hope everyone has found uh, that useful. Three really great um, presentations. So thank you all three, three of you. Thank you. Thank you. So there you go. Um, we hope you can see how the Export Action Plan tool will help you get to your thoughts into paper in a structured way to come up with a hopefully winning international strategy. Um, sorry. Um, and yeah, if uh, you have until August 10th to enter your plan into the International Business Awards for the opportunity to win $5,000 and pitch your business at the WTO Public Forum in Geneva this October. So who needs the World Cup, really? And yeah, if you have any further questions about how to enter the awards or complete your plan, please do get in touch at admin at open2export.com. It really is a great opportunity and we really would not want you to miss it. So please do get in touch. We're more than happy to help. Um, and yeah, we, we always will do our very best to, to help you to enter your plan and to hopefully use the tool to come up with a, a great um, next step in your international growth. Again, more information can be found at opentoexport.com forward slash international hyphen business hyphen awards. You can find um, sign up details as well to all of our future webinars. It's a monthly program we run. Um, you can find those at opentoexport.com forward slash webinars. Indeed, our next session is on July 10th and that's about exporting to Australia. But for now, as always, please do um, take our exit survey to let us know what you thought of today's webinar and to give us any suggestions for improvements or future topics. We hope you find the International Business Awards a, a good opportunity and we look forward to reading your expert action plans. So thank you everyone and goodbye. <laughs>